following local breaking news right now from downtown Jacksonville, where there is another major development in the Corrine Brown corruption trial. We have learned that there's an emergency hearing happening right now. Yeah, our crews are at the courthouse, and they say attorneys representing another media outlet may have gotten a little overzealous. This comes after another juror was replaced yesterday. So Channel 4's Melanie Lawson is live at the federal courthouse downtown. Melanie? Good morning, guys. So very productive deliberations yesterday, but today the special hearing has a lot of folks asking questions. Jim Pickett is in the courtroom this morning listening. It started about 15 minutes ago, and as you mentioned, what was being said and discussed is another media outlet somehow getting overzealous with their coverage. A lot of speculation on what that could mean. There's a general manager from that station upstairs in the courtroom, also attorneys for that station as well, and we should know any minute now exactly what happened since that is the discussion in the courtroom. But again, on the table, were any jurors compromised? That has been so important in this case, making sure that those jurors are not talking about this coverage in the media or amongst themselves unless they are in that deliberation room. So we saw Kareen Brown arrive early this morning. It was about 8.40, 8.35 when she came to the courthouse, a second day of a special session. So it was early. We threw some questions at her, but she had absolutely nothing to say except for someone in her entourage did say that they are hopeful and praying for a good outcome. I want to bring in Jean Nichols, an attorney, again, not associated with this case, but to offer some perspective. Um, you said this should be very fast. And if a media outlet talked to a current juror, that would be a big problem. It would be a big problem. And as we know, and as we've just learned over the last minute or two, the judge has ordered all media outlets to stay away from the alternate juror. That order has just come down, which is not surprising for Judge Corrigan to tell all all media outlets do not talk to this individual. This individual could have an impact on deliberations. So anything that happened while they were in that courtroom, the judge is going to make sure we don't find out any of it, at least until after this trial is over. And that's very important to note because they did deliberate for 12 hours, you know, a day and a half of discussions, obviously looking through documents, taking this very seriously. Um, so that information does need to stay secret. No question about it. And the biggest worry is, is even though the jurors have been instructed, don't don't watch the news, don't read the papers, don't look online. If this juror comes out and starts telling everybody what's going on in that courtroom, what the jury has been deliberating on, it could impact what happens the rest of the day, potentially tomorrow and afterwards. So there's no question that juror, it's hands off until this is over with. And, and likely, you know, the scenario here, if this media outlet did go to the home of a juror, maybe it was a mistake, maybe they thought they were going to the juror that was released, that person's house. Um, but as you mentioned, the jurors know not to say anything. So in this scenario, the best case would be you know, maybe the media outlet made a mistake, the juror didn't answer the door, but of course let the court know, and they have the responsibility to debrief and make sure that nothing was compromised. Yeah, I think what we had was a presumption by a media outlet that because they had been released, that they may be allowed to talk about something. Fortunately, it sounds like it was just a business card that was left. I'm sure that juror or the former juror then contacted the judge because you usually get the judge's phone number to make sure if anything happens. And at that point in time, that's when everything got shut down. So we don't have any of these problems ever again. Let's talk a little bit about the mindset. I mean, these jurors, they've been through a lot. You know, they've been listening to hours and days of testimony. Now deliberations being told yesterday that they were going to have to start over. Now another special hearing. You know, what's going on, you know, in their mind? Are they kind of like, let's get this started? Because yesterday we saw some movement after a day and a half of deliberations. No word to the judge, no questions. Yesterday we had two questions, so it did look like they were pushing along, and as you mentioned earlier, being very serious about what they were considering. Well, I think that what we saw with this new jury is they probably had some of these issues already on the table, already had questions, and they didn't really come to light until the new juror came in, maybe because they were having problems with the initial juror, who knows, but we do know that as soon as that new juror sat in the room, we had some initial questions, some very interesting questions that can be looked at both ways, both pro-government and pro Corrine Brown. And it was also interesting to look at the way they asked the question, starting with those bottom counts. Um, so maybe they were working their way from the bottom up. Maybe they had found some agreement and these were easy things they could hash out and wanted to save the tough stuff for later. We just don't know. We don't know. E either way, we could speculate a hundred different ways as to why they were at these bottom counts at that time. Typically, you would expect a jury to maybe start at the top counts and start back all over again. But these are questions that this juror who came in may have had 
automatically. This could have been one of the first things that they asked. Hey, did you guys address this? What about these issues? And that's why they immediately got in front of the judge with questions, because this is something that this juror may have been sitting on for two days mm -hmm. before they actually got in that room. And that was the opportunity to do it. All right, Gene, we appreciate you talking with us. Um, Jim Pickett actually is coming out of the courtroom. Um, Jim, obviously this means the special session's over. Can you give us some information on what happened? Basically what happened is a reporter from Channel 12 actually went to a juror's house uh, and not knowing that it was a sitting juror, thinking it was the one who was dismissed. The judge said the juror was never contacted. Uh, they knocked on the door, left a business card, but the station had called the judge saying, hey, we made a mistake, something had happened. And the judge basically said, okay, thank goodness that the juror wasn't contacted at this point. They're not going to talk to them right now because they don't feel they were compromised at that. He issued a stern warning uh, to media, don't contact the jurors, even saying don't contact even the dismissed jurors at this point. Um, there, uh, Channel 12's attorney spoke and saying this was an accident. Uh, they, they said this won't happen again and that, that type of thing. But that was the gist of this. So they, the juror was never contacted at that point. So they said that that was a good thing. So uh, right, the, so they right. can move forward. Um, Jim, you know, you've been in this business a long time, and, and we know better. You know you know that in a case like this, as serious as this is, um, you know, you, you just don't, you want the information, but sometimes this is the thing you just have to wait for until everything's over. That, that's, you know, you have to do that, and you have to respect the, the order about, uh, uh, particularly about sitting jurors, not to talk to them. And you do. You you walk away. You, they have a juror button on now. You know, at the home, I don't know. They just said it was overzealousness that, that happened with that case and that's what happened at this point and you know their attorney spoke the judge might take it up after right. this is done to issue a stern warning but he you know to the station that was involved but that's that's okay. what happened. And so, have they started deliberations again? or uh, uh, The jury, then they're calling them back in, and they're going to begin deliberations as well. Okay. So we'll be moving into day four. All right. So a small bump in the road, but now they're back on. They're back um, on. Everyone's up there, yes. Okay, Jim, thank you so much. Appreciate that. All right, so there you go. You have the very latest. Um, deliberations will begin any minute now. Things seem to have been sorted out. And again, the media being advised to stay away from these jurors and not ask them any questions. Again, we are on the latest developments. Anything that happens up in that courtroom. We will be there, bring it to you live here on 4, also on newsforjax.com. Melanie Lawson from the courthouse. Back to you, Jen and Scott. Melanie.